Welcome to the University of Maryland Arboretum. Today we are going to take you on a tour around some of the trees on campus that are native to this region. This map shows the trees that are part of the campus tree walk. The trees around the Memorial Chapel are arguably some of the prettiest on campus and it is here that we will begin our tour. To the south side of the chapel entrance there is a mature green ash, Fraxinus pensylvanica, literally meaning of Pennsylvania. It is native to eastern and central North America and is a medium sized deciduous tree around 20 meters tall. The bark of young trees is smooth and grey, whilst older ones like this have bark that has become thick and fissured. Naturally a moist bottom land or stream bank tree, it is hardy to climatic extremes and is the most widely distributed of all the American ashes. The leaves are green on both sides and 15 to 30 centimetres long, with 7 to 9 leaflets. In the fall, the leaves turn golden yellow and are usually the first of the trees on campus to change colour, sometimes as early as Labour Day. The flowers are inconspicuous, having no petals, and are produced in spring at the same time as the new leaves. The large seed crops provide food to many kinds of wildlife. The green ash is seriously threatened in some areas, particularly Michigan, by the emerald ash borer, a beetle accidentally introduced from Asia to which it has no natural resistance. As such, the campus ashes are subject to regular monitoring. Across the road in front of the chapel and travelling downhill towards Route 1, there is an eastern white pine, Latin name Pinus strabus. The eastern white pine has the distinction of being the tallest tree in eastern North America, capable of growing up to 60 metres tall. White pine forests originally covered much of northeastern North America, though only 1% of the original trees remain untouched by extensive logging operations in the 17 and 1800s. This one is young compared to specimens in Wisconsin and Michigan, which are approaching 500 years in age. Like all members of the pine genus, the leaves are needles in bundles of five. They persist for 18 months, but when they do drop they are hard to clear up, which is why this one is situated on a grassy area above the playing fields and not on a roadside. The cones have scales with a rounded apex and slightly reflexed tip. The eastern white pine is the provincial tree of Ontario and the state tree of Maine and Michigan and its pine cone and tassel is the state flower of Maine. During the age of sale, the tall trees with their high quality wood were valued for masts. The British even built special barge-like vessels which could carry up to 50 pine trunks destined to be ship masts. Walking back up towards Regent's Drive, it is impossible to miss the glory of the white oak, Quercus alba, one of the preeminent hardwoods of eastern North America. Although called the white oak, it is very unusual to find an individual with white bark. The usual colour is an ashen grey. The white oak is a long-lived oak, with specimens known to have lived over 800 years old. White oaks can reach the magnificent height of 25 metres of maturity and develop into massive broad top trees with grey limbs striking out at wide angles. In spring, the young leaves are exquisite in their delicate silvery pink, covered with soft down as with a blanket. The leaf stems are short and the leaves which cluster close to the ends of the shoots are pale green with the result that the entire tree has a misty, frosty look. As springtime progresses, the leaves pass through the opalescent changes of soft pink, silvery white and finally yellow-green. The leaves usually turn red or brown in autumn and begin falling in early October. The white oak serves as the state tree of Illinois, Connecticut and Maryland. One of the most famous white oaks in America is the Charter Oak of Hartford, Connecticut, the subject of a legend nearly as old as the colony itself. The next tree on our trail is the American sweet gum, the Quidumbas deracifluor. In 
It is a deciduous tree native to the warm temperate areas of eastern North America. It grows 20 to 35 meters tall with a trunk up to 2 meters in diameter and has leaves similar to those of the maple trees composed of five palmate lobes. However, unlike the maple, the lobes are arranged alternately, not in opposite pairs. They are a rich dark green and glossy and in most cases turn brilliant orange, red and purple colours in the fall. The fruit, popularly nicknamed gumball or sticky ball, is a hard, dry, globose compound fruit around 3 cm in diameter and composed of 20 to 50 capsules. Each capsule has a pair of terminal spikes and contains one or two small seeds. The American sweet gum is a popular ornamental tree grown for its intense fall colours, but it also has some drawbacks. The wood is brittle and the tree drops branches easily in storms. The spiked gumballs can be unpleasant to walk on. In fact, in California they are known as ankle biters or ankle twisters and their profusion can smother a lawn unless removed. Walking northwards, we reach the eastern end of the mall, which was constructed to mimic the National Mall in Washington, D.C. The administration building is located at the eastern end with McCowden Library at the far end. We are going to walk up the northern side of the mall through the walkway of Willow Oak Branches. The Quercus phallus is a deciduous tree that belongs to the red oak species of oaks and is native to eastern North America. It is most commonly found growing on lowland floodplains, often along streams, and can grow up to 20 to 30 metres tall. It is aptly named as its leaves, unlike other oak trees' leaves, are willow-shaped. They are bright green on top and pale, hairless green underneath. The willow oak is one of the most prolific producers of acorns and starts producing them at around 15 years of age, earlier than many oak species, which probably explains the huge squirrel population on campus. Willow oaks tend to grow larger than planners expect, often leading to cracked sidewalks. One intriguing solution to this problem that is currently being tried in Washington, D.C. is to use rubber sidewalks made from recycled tyres. Leaving the mall and walking towards H.J. Patterson Building and Campus Drive, we find one of several sugar maples on campus. Latin name Acca Saccharum, it is native to the hardwood forests of northeastern North America and is a deciduous tree normally capable of reaching 25 to 35 metres tall. The sugar maple is an immensely important species to the ecology of many forests in North America, often associating with the American beech, forming the beech maple forest type, common in northern areas. The sugar maple is also among the most shade tolerant of large deciduous trees and therefore is particularly well suited to shaded areas such as those found in built-up urban regions. The leaves are deciduous, with spectacular fall colours, ranging from bright yellow through orange to fluorescent red-orange, with a tendency to colour unevenly in the fall. Yellow-green petalless flowers are produced in early spring in corums of five to ten together, giving a double Samara fruit with two winged seeds, which fall from the tree in autumn. The sugar maple is one of the most important Canadian trees and along with the black maple is the major source of sap for making maple syrup. The wood is one of the hardest and densest of the maples and is prized for furniture and flooring. Bowling alleys and pins are both commonly manufactured from sugar maple and it is also used for basketball courts, including the floors used by the NBA.